Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look At Flyin'. Let's Look At, of course, is the show where I play exclusively puzzle platformers that have come out on Steam. Well, that is, of course, a little bit of me being facetious, but this is like the eighth puzzle platform I have played in a very recent amount of time. You know, we got Pid, Gianna Sisters, which I guess is technically an action platformer, Thomas Was Alone, etc., etc. Anyway, this is Flyin'. Flynn. I'm gonna call it Flyin', even though it kind of annoys me to call it that. And this is from a studio known as Ankama Studios. Now, they have a long and storied history, but I actually don't know any of it, so I don't know why I brought it up. Let's just start here, and we will start playing. So this is our loading screen. As you can see, we're introduced to a few of the characters here. We've got Green Dude, Yellow Dude, Blue Dude, and Black Dude. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring race into this. Uh, but basically, this is our interface for playing this game right now. So just so you know, I am playing this indeed with the Xbox 360 controller on the PC, but you are capable of playing it with, you know, WASD as well. So I believe that this is kind of our hub world. This is only the second time I've seen this, uh, but if I go through some of these nodes somewhere anyway, we should be able to access levels that we've already gotten to. It doesn't have like a traditional... Oh, those are keyholes is what those are. Uh, it doesn't have a traditional style like um, hub world where you can just pick the worlds that you want to go to, you know, like Super Mario style. Instead, we have to go through this kind of hoop here. But anyway, I figured it out. Let's talk a little bit more about flying once this game boots up. And you will pretty easily see uh, how things work in this game. So that's our villain there, this hairdryer slash birdo wannabe. And this is us right here, so I'm just using my analog stick to move around. And basically, flying enlists, uh, or puts us in the role of uh, four different colored characters, each with their own special abilities. So you can see my special ability here with the green character is the ability to kind of stick to surfaces. So if I wanted to, I could go like completely, oh god! I could go completely upside down there. I don't want to do that because uh, we're gonna die. Also, I'll talk about that dimension shifting thing I just did there in a second, but right now I'm just trying to outrun the enemies here. Um, we are also capable, I'll talk about, I've only unlocked the, the blue one and the green one so far in like the hour or so of play that I've had. Uh, but we'll see both of those a little bit later, I assure you. Well, we're seeing one of them right now, but we'll see the other one a little bit later. Oh god, it's coming closer! Um, maybe we won't see the blue one, but anyway, uh, basically this is the principal mechanic of the game. It's a puzzle platformer where you have, basically, uh, differential powers that you can use. Is that, that's not damaging, good. Uh, differential powers that you can use in order to achieve all your objectives. So we're collecting, basically, these remnants of flowers here. I'm not sure how those exactly tie into the story, but... They work similar to in a game like Gianna Sisters, where I actually kind of disparage the game for this. This game kind of has collecting for collecting's sake, at least with respect to those... Uh, oh, that was bad. At least with, we had to start all the way back at the beginning. Sometimes the checkpoint system can be a little bit draconian, but I'm, I'm sure it'll happen faster this time than it did last time. Oh no, we're starting back at this cannon here. I'm not sure why we got that opening cutscene again. Uh, but yes, the, the flowers that we're collecting, they basically just feed into uh, how we do on the level, like our leaderboard position, which in terms of platformers, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. I always feel like if you're collecting like hundreds of these things, they should at least have some use. Uh, like they do in a game like Trine, for example. There we go, so we made it up here. These things basically just... Oh, I should have gotten that. I fucked that up miserably. Let's try this again. So those cannons act as checkpoints, but yeah, I, I, I like the way that games like Trine do it, where they give you like new abilities or upgraded abilities. Whereas in this game, they do seem a little bit shallow. But there are other things we can collect, like that blue orb up there that actually do have importance. Uh, with respect to the actual puzzles of the game. So we're just shifting the dimensions here. Uh, the way that this works is basically it reveals like alternate paths for us. It's actually, the more I, I, I play this game, the more similar I feel it is to Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, for better or worse. For what it's worth, oh, come on, yes, you can do it. For what it's worth, I enjoy this uh, a lot more than Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, but again, it, it's one of those games where it, it's good, it's fine, but in a, in a crowded year, and particularly like a crowded month for puzzle platformers, it's hard to... At least for me, it's hard to, uh, you know, recommend these games. They don't really differentiate themselves all that much. So we do have two... Oh, that's how we get out. We do have two of those blue orbs now. I'll explain what those do in a second, but for now we got to do a little bit of puzzling. And in terms of, like, uh, this is another thing I like to talk about when it comes to puzzle platformers, is, like, the mix between puzzling, oh god, and platforming. Uh, red things kill us instantly, as you just saw right there. But we just started this checkpoint anyway. Um... This game, I, I would say it's mostly platforming. Like, there's a lot of uh, issues. I mean, it's not Super Meat Boy in terms of its difficulty or VVV, VVV or anything like that. Uh, but most of the difficult sections in the game that I've encountered so far haven't been, like, on a conceptual level. It's been on a, an actual execution level, which I enjoy because, you know, I'm basically 
functionally retarded when it comes to uh, like the actual puzzles in puzzle games. But so far it hasn't been too, too difficult for me, which should tell you a lot. So let's come up here. Uh, we can get all of these, hopefully. You can see that right now, by the way, we, with the right trigger. Oh god, get out of there. Um, every time I try to show something off, the redness tries to get us, which we really don't understand beyond the fact that it's just like creeping lava, basically. Um, right trigger allows us to glide, which is what I was going to say there. And that's uh, a move that is available for all characters, or at least both of the characters that I've played as so far. So you unlock the... it's... as you might expect, you unlock this green character. Oh no! You unlock this green character after you beat the first world, I assume. That was bad as well. I assume you unlock the other characters when you beat a uh, subsequent world. So let's see if we can do this. So we're going to switch here. Oh, come on! In terms of control, uh, with the controller, the game controls fine. I can't actually speak for the PC controls as I haven't actually touched them myself. However, that being said, th there's a lot going on here that makes me kind of worry about the PC controls, but I, it's not fair, fair for me to say that without actually having... This is surprisingly difficult, actually. It's not f fair for me to disparage the PC controls without actually, you know, having seen them myself. So what I will say is that it, with the Xbox 360 controller, which is the way I prefer to play my platformers most of the time, due to personal preference, you can make it, thank you. Um, yeah, with the Xbox 360 controller, it controls absolutely fine. You basically use use the right trigger for the glide ability, left trigger to switch between dimensions whenever you have like a platform in your way or something like that. Uh, X is going to be your special ability for the character, which for this character allows us... Oh! Now we're switching. <laughs> for the last character, it allowed us to stick to the wall. For this character, it actually allows us to sing. So this is our blue character. That's his special ability, is the ability to sing. Also, he's got the glide as well, as you can see. Uh, we can... Oh! No, I want to go down! Turn this off! I thought I found a secret. There's a lot of secrets. This is actually going to mark the end of the level here. Whenever you come across this like current at the end, then you can go through it. It uh, allows you to finish the level. So we got leaderboards. You can see our score. We got 127 out of 200 flower bits. It took us 5 minutes and 9 seconds. We got 2 blue orbs, which are actually used for puzzles, but we didn't see any there. Uh, and we died 8 times, and there's our final score down there at the bottom. So let's go to the next level. As is unusual for me with puzzle platformers, I'm actually doing these levels sight on scene. This is about 45 minutes to an hour into the game, I would say. Uh, but the game has been at least simple, simple enough so far that I, I don't really feel like I'm, you know, putting myself at risk trying to uh, do these levels sight on scene for the purposes of the video. So I was just checking around the outside there to see if there were any flower bits. You can see there are 300 on this level. And the thousand nations of the Persian Empire are going to descend upon... Oh! You cannot do that! That's not good for us. That's going to be one easy death, obviously. Uh, we're going to try to make this actually work this time. You might think you're foolish, but hey. Or you might think I'm foolish, but... Hey, that glide actually worked out well for us. So in terms of aesthetics, I, I really like where this game's coming from. This is what I think... I mean, at, at its core, when I was playing this, I was like, I'm going to eat shit on this video, because people are going to be like, Northern Lion. This looks a lot like Gianna Sisters, that game that you hated. Uh, but I don't hate this. I didn't, I didn't hate Gianna Sisters. I, I was a little bit, perhaps, uh, harsh to Gianna Sisters. Although I firmly believe everything I said. Maybe I could have said it in a nicer way. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of, like, actual look, one of the reasons I like this game a lot more than Gianna Sisters is, whoa, I didn't expect that, uh, is because I think it looks better. I think there's been more care, or at least more creativity applied to the aesthetics. Obviously, creativity is something that's hard to measure. Uh, but it, the, the visuals are certainly more interesting than they were in Gianna Sisters. The gameplay is a little bit more, or it, it emphasizes like combat substantially less. In fact, it doesn't emphasize combat at all. Uh, at least not yet. However, it has the same similar mechanic of like, you know, you've got to switch between characters, some, or switch between characters and switch between dimensions. Uh, and you know, some uh, collectibles are only available in one dimension, some are available in all of them. Maybe we want to go with, no, we want to go with the green guy, I think, here. Uh, can we still sneak through here? I think we should be able to. Yeah, perfect. We'll go pick up some of this stuff. Uh, but what separates us from Gianna Sisters is, is functionally, I think the music is not great, but not as bad. And I know a lot of people actually thought the music in Gianna Sisters was, was good, but what, what can I say? I'm just giving my personal opinion here. Uh, and beyond that, I find the gameplay a little bit more interesting. I'm always... I'm As much as I kind of get on puzzle platformers and developers of puzzle platformers cases for making so many of this kind of game. It's the kind of game that I actually prefer to like a, you know, mid-90s PlayStation 1 style action platformer like Gex or something. Not that I'm shit-talking Gex, which is a game that I imagine at Whoa! I'm not sure what happened there, but we're still alive. Um, which is a game that I imagine, or a series that I imagine will probably 
see a Kickstarter about soon. Ah, that was really stupid of me. But yes, in the, in the, the pantheon of puzzle platforming games, uh, this is unlikely to go down as one of the best ones. Maybe even not one of the best ones from this year. But, you know, considering it's going to cost you... I think it was $10 on Steam. It might have been 8 I always get confused when, when companies start using that like $8 price point. I'm like, no, it's 5 and 10 That's it. Uh, I guess we're going to go up here. Oh, we need to change actually to the blue guy to be able to sing. So hopefully... Oh, that's not the cannon we want. Um, this is kind of a frustrating element of the game. We can immediately go back to the cannon just by pressing Y. Oh, but I don't want to go to this cannon. I want to go to the one below us. So I guess i got to re-platform like all that shit that we just did. So let's come back down here. It should be easy enough anyway. Stick to the wall. Find the platform, get on the platform. No! There we go, we're okay. A little bit floaty sometimes. But yeah, this is not gonna be in contention with games like, you know, Braid, Super Meat Boy, World of Goo. Well, I guess World of Goo is more a puzzler than a puzzle platform. Not a puzzle platformer at all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's in no danger. Wait a minute, we can't even get out here with this guy. Suddenly, everything has changed. Let's try that one more time, but I think we might be shit out of luck there. We might have to go back to the green guy, and I just did all that for naught. Uh, but yeah, it, it, there's a no danger of this being, you know, ten years down the road, people are like, you know what I really like? Cave Story and Flying. Also, dumb name. But overall, <laughs> any, th that was awful. Any game with an apostrophe in it, I can get behind, you know. Tubin. That's the only one I can really think of. Is there, I thought maybe there was a way up here if we switched uh, to our other dimension, but there was not. So I guess we do have to go with the green guy. I'm just not sure when we get the, uh blue guy back and gain the ability to sing because this is obviously easy for us to just climb up here like this it was fucking impossible for the blue guy maybe physically impossible let's try this again what would a northern lion let's look at of a puzzle platformer be without me making a horrendous mistake at some point uh there's probably a way up here and i'm guessing that that way entails us yeah doing that okay i figured there like i said way more uh platformer elements than puzzle elements here that was not good what we gotta try to do is get this platform stopped. Yeah, like right there. Oh, you almost botched it for yourself. <laughs> almost blamed the game there, but it wasn't really the game's problem. Let's switch back here. Collect some more of these things. So we're getting close to maybe halfway through the level. Now what we're gonna do here is just sing, which is this character's special ability. Did that seriously not work? Let's try it again. There we go. So by singing, we created this path for ourselves to come up through here. There are areas that actually get more difficult. Okay, how are we gonna do this? I think we want to do it like this. Like, this thing comes down all the way. Yes, like that. Then we come up here and go, like, double jump. There we go. Uh, yeah, there are some more puzzly elements that, that take place as, as well. Uh, but for now, this is all we need to do. Now, I do need some switches. Well, obviously, we need to be the blue guy for this one. But I need some of those blue vats that allow us to do the singing here. Sadly, we do not have any, which worries me, because it, it looks like we should have three by now. Um, but let's stick as blue guy. We'll come down. Maybe there was a path that I missed down here. Let's just throw ourselves down here. Um, maybe not, though. Fell all the way to the bottom. I'm actually quite confused right now. Give it a second. Again, what would a northern lion let's look at of a puzzle platformer be without substantial errors happening at some point? Entertaining, they said. Sucks to your ass, Mar. Is there a way out of uh, for this? Of this for us? How could I possibly miss out on so many switches? Sing. Sing! Didn't want to channel Arnold Schwarzenegger and Batman and Robin there. Well, we can sing, but we don't have any switches that will... Or we don't have any blue orbs that will actually deposit themselves in these switches to save our lives. Which is a problem. Maybe this one? Oh, this one actually gives us one. Okay, so I'm still a little bit unclear on those mechanics. The best way I can describe it is as you switch dimensions, uh, the properties change to a certain extent. Can we get out of here even? Basically, like, singing will accomplish different things based on whether you're in the, the dark dimension or the light dimension. In the light dimension, it allows you to actually steal an orb when you sing, I think. Yes, and in the dark dimension, it allows you to place an orb. So I think this is going to be a little bit puzzly. This one will probably rotate the like inner part here. No. Okay, this allows us to go out, which we don't want. What we do need is another... Oh. Another switch here. Or another orb here. 
Again, hopefully this is being articulated well. It's kind of difficult to explain what the hell's going on here. Basically, we're puzzling. It's a switch puzzle. There we go. We found a way out. So we're inevitably going to come back here probably and have to leave out the right side. But for now, we are back as Green Dude. Oh, that was awful. Normally, like on, on first sight read, these levels seem to take anywhere from, you know, five minutes to... I've had levels that have taken me like seven to ten minutes. I'm just going to try to hit all these. Again, this is a, a totally Gianna Sisters tactic right here. Get all this shit and then move out. I mean, it, it's unfortunate these games are coming out so close together. Oh, that's not good for us. Uh, because they really are fairly similar. And I'm not saying that to be disparaging for the third time to either one of them. Uh, there's more than cosmetic similarities between this and Gianna Sisters for sure. Which is probably just bad coincidence or unluckiness really. But it's, it's like when Deep Impact and Armageddon came out so close to, together, you know? Let's see if we can pick this up. We can indeed. Now let's just immediately teleport back to the cannon. Come back in this way, and we'll probably have to insert one of these in one of these switches. I'm guessing, oh yes, of course we have to be blue. So we'll pop this in here with our singing ability. This should let us leave out the bottom left. Bottom right, I'm guessing, is going to be the end of this level. Uh, and we do want to sing here as well. There's other areas in the level where you can just sing, and they can give you secrets, or, uh, you know, give you more of these bad boys right here. I don't know what that does, actually. Is there a blue switch that I could have gotten for that? Switching dimensions doesn't seem to make a big difference. But we got more of these now. Um... Well... You raise a good question here. Why don't we take this one... And we'll pop it in... Oh, no, I want to be blue. Pop it in, like, over here? Yeah, there we go. Now we can exit to the bottom right. And I assume that we're basically coming up to the end of the level here. I have no ability to sing there, but I think if I go back to my cannons, I might be able to... Here's the thing, I don't want to take these gems, so let's not take the gems. I don't want to take them because uh, I think it'll, I'll ruin my own puzzle for myself, whereas right now it's probably okay. We actually need to be blue guy here, which we can't do right now. Let's get inside of here. You know, like, in terms of like the difficulty of this platform, it's quite easy despite the fact that I maybe seem to have been having some trouble with it over the course of this video. The puzzles, I guess, occasionally can be a, a little tricky, but there haven't been all that many of them. And most of them have seemed pretty superficially solved. Uh, can we get... Okay, this is gonna be difficult. He says after just describing how easy the game was. Because what we have to do here is kind of like get up to that elevator. Oh, that actually was not as difficult as I thought it was. We can just shoot out here. Not elevator, cannon. But this allows us to be the blue guy, and being the blue guy, did I just... I thought I took fall damage there. We can now sing and uh, take these switches away. Am I crazy here? What's going on? We need some more switches! I almost feel like I need to exit here. And can I take these with me? Is that how this works? No, I need to go back and get them. Gosh! Darn it! I need... I want to go back. I don't know if I can do this anymore. I've never actually put myself in an impossible to win situation. I'm guessing it, it is impossible to put yourself into that situation. But who knows, man. Stranger things have happened. So if this is where we're stuck over here... There's gotta be some way to get to that, that left side there. Oh, there's a switch right there, or uh, an orb right there. I'll make that mistake every time, so just get used to it, basically. And is it possible that I'm missing one more somewhere? Perhaps even a, a very obvious one? Well, that was bad. But now I think I can go up here, turn blue, cause this thing to come up. There's probably two more orbs down there that I can get. Bob's your uncle. We're through the level. Northern Lion retains some... Not all, certainly, but some of his integrity as a platformer enthusiast. Despite the fact that I always suck in these videos somehow. Uh, so let's come down here. We'll sing. And in singing, we come up here. I thought I was going to die for a second there, but we're okay. And we will also get, if I can just glide here, get all these. I want to be the green dude in order to get out of here. Because as it is right now, I don't think I can leave. Uh, I guess I'll use the cannon ability. There we go. Allows us to be blue again. And then coming out of the bottom here, then we can switch to green. And switching to green, we should be able to make the big jump up here. And yes, now we have a new path for ourselves. As, ex as unexcited as I sound, that's pretty much as unexcited as I feel. Like, it's a game that I've, I've not been not enjoying, but at the same time, it's, it's one that I don't 
Oh, my bad. I wanted to sing. Sometimes I confuse X and Y in this game. Um, it's a game that, you know, I don't necessarily feel like I want to spend too much more time with. In terms of, of a financial investment, it's totally fine. Ten dollars for what probably amounts to, you know, given an hour, I'm gonna assume there's four or five worlds, one for each character, and maybe a boss world at the end. You're looking at, you know, four to six hours of gameplay, which is pretty standard for a game of this kind. You can probably now, yeah, go at the top here, and that'll be the end of the level. Uh, but, you know, in terms of, there's other games that I feel like, in this genre, you can get more fun out of. And a lot of them have come out this year, just, you know, look at any of the, let's look at it, look at of puzzle platformers that I've done, and I will give you more rigid examples of those. But here we go, at the end of the level. Um, let's see how much time this one took us. It's gotta be, yeah, that was a long one. 12 minutes, 48 seconds. What I could do here is just quit for a second. And in doing so, I think, yeah, this will take us back here. I want to go back to the hub world and actually show off maybe the boss battle that I got in first. Because the boss battle is a little bit different. Uh, I want to go back to world one. Again, I fucking hate this system that comes up. I think this will allow us to go back to the first world. Yes, yeah, the blue world, right? Okay. So we'll take a loading screen back there. I get that it's abstract, I get that it's trying to be neat, but I wish it was more clear, is what I'm trying to say there. Maybe that makes me an old man, I don't care. Uh, we'll see if we can find our level navigation ability here at some point. Don't give me the Xbox 360 buttons, I know how the controller works. We'll come up here, I think this is where we want to go. This is our boss fight level, so let's just load into this quickly. You know, like PID, like Gianna Sisters, it's got those, um... Boss battles that really harken back to like a, a simpler time, shall we say. Oh, get the... That didn't work. Um, you know, the boss battles are, are set pieces. It's not just, you know, doing the same thing that we've done over the course of the entire thing. So what we have to do here, we have to continue to collect these blue orbs. And then, yes, when he drops the bombs, we switch into the other dimension. We sing. The spheres go into the bombs. The bombs go up and hit him. He gets pissed off. I'll give you one guess as to how many times we have to do this in order to kill this boss. Who really, really looks a lot like Birdo mixed with a hair dryer. I guess Birdo looked hair dryery in her own right. We're just gonna make sure we collect all these. Every once in a while we will get a bomb drop from this dongo. And believe me, it looks easy now. This mission does get much tougher actually. So we're gonna push this like over here. Oh, I got hit. And when you get hit, this is the frustrating part. When you get hit, the, the bomb that you were previously working on disappears. Well, your switch stays, which is good. Sorry, I just bumped the desk there. I'm not sure if people are actually going to be able to hear that reverberating on the microphone. So what we're going to do is, like, come over here. Careful. We're going to switch dimensions. Sing. This should float up. Like, oh, no, no, no. Okay, I think it still did take damage. Yes, it did, because it's launching the missiles now. And this actually took me a long time, my first time through the game. Uh, it's more difficult than you might think just by looking at it. It's you know, Again, this isn't Super Meat Boy going through those bosses for the first time or anything. Uh, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. So we do have our bomb here. We're just going to make that float up. That might actually beat it right here. Oh! I think it did, actually. It did stop it. <laughs> of course, Northern Lion, when he wants to say something is hard, he does well at it. When he wants to say something is easy, he sucks at it. But anyway, we're going to quit here. No need to show off anymore, I think. This is... Fly, and I'm not sure if this is going to take us to the main menu or actually exit the game. So in the meantime, you know, that's that's the mode, single player. I'm not sure if there's any other unlockables. I haven't really encountered anything except for concept art, which I've articulated my feelings on in the past. It's not bad. It's not great. It's available for 10 bucks, and I think that's a reasonable price point for a game of this quality, at least in my, again, personal and professional opinion, and a game of this size as well. So, you know, consider it a tentative thumbs up. Good job. Well done, especially on the, uh, the art side with this game, which is truly the most remarkable thing about this game. The gameplay is... Okay, but fairly by the numbers. But in any case, again, thank you guys for watching. This is now available on Steam, and I will see you next time.